These are confessions of an office supply junkie. For a long time, many years, I have had a fascination with mechanical pencils of all kinds. So I'm going to show you a little bit from my mechanical pencil collection, some of the things I like. So stay tuned. My first introduction to mechanical pencils was years and years ago when I was a kid in high school and I took drafting class and I first uh, was introduced to drafting pencils. Um, but since then, I've kind of enjoyed uh, using mechanical pencils over the years and I've gravitated toward different kinds. Uh, so let's start off with the very earliest kind of mechanical pencil that I uh, was uh, inspired to use. Okay, this is my magic box of mechanical pencils and uh, drafting pencils. And so we're going to take a look here at the start. Let's dig in here. Oh, yeah. So this Fullerton Accutron 1030C was one of the mechanical pencils that I started using in high school. I was taking drafting class and my folks went to the flea market in Albuquerque over by the fairgrounds and they bought me a drafting set and it included several of these uh, pencils. These are actually lead holders. So these things use this drafting leads and they come in a little tube and there's different hardnesses. This is H, but uh, they're quite a bit thicker of a pencil than what you're used to seeing in a normal office type mechanical pencil. This is a drafting pencil. The tip on this, so what you do is you push the button and it releases a claw-like thing in the front and enables you to pull the lead in and out. Now this particular lead I have sharpened is a chisel point, but you can sharpen it uh, any way you want. They have these sharpeners, and this is my sharpener that I've had since I was in high school. This is cast iron, very heavy. It sits on the table and you put your mechanical, your drafting pencil in here and turn it and it sharpens the point for you. Um, there is a knurled knob you remove and you can take off the uh, lid to empty it out, but it's basically a conical shaped surface in there that abrades the pencil lead. So this was my very first. I had several different types of hardness. I have two varieties of lead hardness, H and 4H. That's what I have currently in my collection. But these are available from drafting supply stores and art supply stores. So another thing that we used along with it was we used this wooden paddle with strips of sanding paper that you use for sanding the tip of your drafting pencil. So if you want to give it a nice chisel type pit, uh, tip, you would go like that with it and give it a nice flat chisel tip. But having done this chisel thing, you can, you can get this thin and fat line effect like that for doing kind of uh, different style letters. So it's a very cool pencil. It's not really for writing as much, although traditional draftsmen did, uh, did you know, did their lettering with these pencils, but um, it depends what style you want to do. I generally wouldn't be writing uh, text uh, with a, a pencil like this, but for drawing and stuff, they're, they're pretty cool. They give you some inter interesting line effects, the thin and thick uh, letter effect. Now this is another kind of mechanical pencil that dates back to my childhood. This is a Scripto brand mechanical pencil. And these are known for their transparent plastic barrel that came in a variety of colors. There's kind of a helical screw type of uh, uh, molding on the inside of that. Um, and you twist, you hold the front uh, ferrule and twist the body of the pen to retract or advance the lead. Actually, you twist the back eraser end to advance and retract the lead. The size of leads 
in these type of Scripto pencils are greater than 0.9 millimeters. They're over a millimeter. Um, I haven't really looked for leads for these because this is more of a kind of a collector's item for me. The story is my grandmother used these all the time and she would do the crossword puzzle. These have a cap on the back that you pull off and there is a little hole in there where you can load up more leads in it. And then the erasers, they have a little metal, the eraser has a metal ferrule a cap on the end of it that holds the eraser in here. I could pull it out like that. And I think these, I haven't tried it, but I think these Pentel refillables might work in that to refill these. But uh, these date back to my childhood in the 60s, in the 1960s, these uh, Scripto mechanical pencils. Again, I have not tried to see if there's any replacement leads for them. I suspect there might be. So I would say it was sometime in the mid to late 1990s that I discovered, I rediscovered mechanical pencils as an adult. And I think it was this pencil I started using. This is a Pentel uh, mechanical pencil and it uses the 0.5 millimeter leads. And it uses these fatter style erasers um, which there are replacements for available easily. And um, I really like it. I liked it at the time a lot. This particular one has a really nice big uh, clip for clipping it in, in your pocket or into the pouch of a, a writing bag or whatever. And there is a nice rubbery grip on the front of it here. And it's a little bit bigger in diameter than some of the mechanical pencils I've seen. But I really enjoyed this for quite a long time. Um, and I thought at the time that I really liked 0.5 millimeter leads. Um, and I used them for a number of years in my composition books. And my little writer's bag here, I'm always carrying with me um, replacement leads. And I, of course I have the little Pentel refill in the 0.5 millimeter size. So sometime a few years after I got this Pentel here, I found at Pen and Pad in Albuquerque this wonderful Faber-Castell uh, TK Fine Vario L 0.5 mechanical uh, pencil and it, it's for 0.5 um, millimeter leads. Um, what's interesting, it has several different features. Let's start at the back. First of all, it has a small size eraser that you can twist to advance it to advance the eraser, and there's plenty of eraser in there. Um, one of the unique features about this pen is it has this hard, soft touch adjustment, and you, you twist the metal front relative to the plastic barrel, and you can change the hardness. There's kind of a dampening, a spring-loaded action on the tip as you write, and you can change how much of a dampening there is or how hard that is. So it kind of changes the effect of how it feels to your for writing. Then it has a nice machined uh, collar here for the grip with grooves, and it's kind of fluted in a nice shape. And then one of the other features I really liked about it is it has this um, label system. There's a little window, and you can turn it, and this is how you have to turn it. Um, you turn the brown plastic part to change the hardness on the scale there. This particular one, I've used it so much over the years, the little plastic piece is split and so it doesn't uh, grip the shaft here adequately so it slips, but I could put a spot of glue in there and fix it. But that's basically how you do it. You, you, uh, chain, you turn it so that it reads the right reading in the window. You can use it as a notation for uh, what the current type of lead is that you're using in, in the pencil. So this is one of my favorite uh, 0.5 millimeter uh, uh, pencils. Uh, Faber-Castell makes great products. And this is one of the classic ones. Sometime a few years later, I discovered uh, 0.7 millimeter leads. So I thought for many years that I was a 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil guy. And then for some reason, I was at an office supply store and I saw these blue 0.7 millimeter pencils, Pentels, a P207, classic, classic pencil. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to try getting one of these 0.7s and some LEDs and see if I like it. And you know what happened? It turns out that I really am 
a 0 0.7 millimeter pencil user now. And the, the main difference has to do with the 0 0.5s, uh, the leads broke too easy. They're just a little too thin, and I guess I have a heavy hand, and I was always breaking the leads. These 0.7s being a little thicker, they just don't break nearly as much, and yet they're not so wide that the line gets dull. They always maintain a sharp enough point, uh, so you always have a nice crisp line, but uh, they just don't break as much. And I really think the 0.7s are, for me, the optimal balance between sharpness and, uh, and durability. So this one is using the uh, 0.7 Pentel um, HB LEDs in the little holder. And I liked it so much that when I started journal writing a lot in a composition book, and I had been using a red ballpoint pen for a while, for doing corrections, uh, for, for editing my writings, and I like doing that so much that after a while I decided, you know what, I'm going to get some red mechanical pencil lead. So I got some Pentel 0 0.7 in red, and I bought me a second P207 pencil, and I painted the cap red. <laughs> so I know uh, which pen has black and which pen has the red pencil. And so this is my primary uh, journal writing, pencil writing uh, kit right here, the red and the black in the 0 0.7 Pentel stuff. So those are really great. And also for the P207 uh, Pentel pencils, you can buy the refills of erasers. Just like earlier when I was liking to use 0 0.5s and I bought this fancy Faber-Castell for 0 0.5s, I found a Faber-Castell in 0 0.7 millimeter leads. It's a slightly different style. It has this smooth uh, plastic, uh, kind of almost a rubbery feeling barrel. And then there's a knurled front grip that uh, grips you real nice. Um, the, uh, the action on the tip is fixed. It doesn't have a spring action like the other one, uh, but it has a nice durable uh, clip. And it has this adjustable window for the different kinds of LEDs you're using. It's currently set to HB, but again, you can set it to, there's F and 2H and all the others, but yeah, it has that really cool feature where you can set the, the hardness of it. And you know what? I said this is Faber-Castell. I, I take it back. This is actually Pentel, and I can tell by the eraser. It's a Pentel-style eraser, uh, the same kind as this. Uh, the reason why I, there was confusion is because the writing on the barrel of the pen is all worn off except for the 0.7 is still visible. But I've used this pencil a lot along with the lesser expensive ones. So this is a little bit fancier of a 0.7 Pentel and I really love this pen. Nice and heavy, has that nice machine feel to it. Just a few years ago, I uh, saw this mechanical pencil in a Moleskine notebook display at a bookstore and I bought it. This is a Moleskine brand mechanical pencil and it's intended, it's a kind of rectangular in cross-section, has a wide, flat plastic clip with kind of a rubbery grip back here, and it's designed for use with Moleskine notebooks. You clip them in the notebook, and uh, there's the, the advancing of there. It has a square or rectangular plastic cap, a button that you push. If you pull that off, there is a clear plastic tube that almost looks like it's a, an ink pen refill cartridge, but it's actually where you put the leads for refilling the pen. And you can put replacement LEDs around the outside of it in the little compartment there. So it's a little more compact. I'm not really sure how much more compact because if you look at, um, I guess, the body thickness, it's probably slightly thinner than the standard Pentel P207 without the clip. But it's not much thinner, but it, it doesn't roll. That's the thing, being rectangular, it won't roll off a table is easy. But. So just recently, less than a month ago, I was at a closeout sale of a big box uh, office supply retailer and I picked up a whole pack of these disposable Papermate Sharp Writer number two mechanical pencils. And these are 0.7 millimeter leads also. But you know, these uh, are disposable mechanical pencils, which means that if you pull the eraser off inside the little fill tube where you put the leads is blocked up. It's not, you can't refill the leads. Uh, and I guess if you want to get fancy, you could probably drill a hole out in there and, 
use it as a refillable. But these are really intended to be disposable pencils. So I kind of use them out of my workshop and my workbench. The kind of a pencil where if it gets broken, stepped on, or lost, it's not such a great loss because they're under a dollar for a whole pack of them. And I really dislike the idea of disposable mechanical pencils because it's, it's such a waste of materials. But I wanted to show this to you anyway that these are available out there and maybe they're a good gateway to getting um, kids and whatever involved in using mechanical pencils instead of wood case pencils. And this reminds me that along with the other refill cartridges that I normally carry with my pencils, these packs of red and black leads in 0.5 and 0.7 millimeter. Um, I also carry, of course, the erasers, uh, replacement erasers. But I have a baggie that all of my mechanical pencils accessories go in. I have more replacement leads and, uh, and different hardnesses, different sizes. I have more replacement erasers. I have a whole pack of Pentel 0.7 millimeter leads. So I have, I'm stocked up for the duration here. Uh, but it's nice to stock up and have a variety of mechanical pencil and accessories with you. Now there also are 0.9 millimeter leads and mechanical pencils. And I remember uh, at one time I had one, it was, it was a yellow Pentel. But I believe what I found was I didn't like the thickness of the lead. Yeah, it didn't break, but it was just a little too thick and it would get dull. Uh, but you couldn't really sharpen them unless you want to use a piece of sandpaper or something. I just found them a little bit too thick for my purposes, but I do still have a pack of 0.9 millimeter leads. I wouldn't consider myself a hardcore environmentalist, but I do appreciate the idea that mechanical pencils are a little bit more forgiving on wasting natural resources compared to wood case pencils. The thing about wood case pencils, of course, you got to have a pencil sharpener, right? They get dull. Whereas the 0.5 and 0.7 millimeter mechanical pencils, um, they just uh, stay sharp enough all the time that they always write well. Um, and all you need is a little refill ca uh, container of more leads and eventually more erasers. I really think they're a great economical and, and, and absolutely wonderful writing tool. And I, I believe more people should try mechanical pencils in their future. Until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve, and I am an office supply junkie.